Hello and welcome to episode 16 of our Chakad Yanrung campaign. In the last episode, we finally were able to unite most of South Alas under our control. We just need to annex our vassal of Han Sai and do a little bit of war with Pruikin, and all of our southern borders are going to be completely uh, secured and good. Now, when we do that, it might make Buvari a little bit upset because we are going to cut them off from one of their provinces, but they'll get over it, hopefully, in time, hopefully. If they don't, well, that's going to kind of suck because I would like to have them as an ally when I go to war with the command. Uh, but you know what? If we can't, we can't. Now, last episode, we were trying to annex Hansai and it kept going like to 90 and then it dropped to 80 and then it jumped back up and then jumped back down. And the reason is, someone points out in the comments, is our all power cost from our mages was fluctuating by giving them privileges and taking away privileges. So if I go ahead and sum the diet, that will give us minus 10% all power cost reduction, which should hopefully complete this rather quickly on the month tick. Uh, as for that, we can go ahead and say that we will build a temple because we do have a mission that requires us to build some temples. And let's look at that mission here. Where are you? It is you. So all the highlighted provinces, which I mean, it's a little bit difficult to see because of the coloring of the highlight with our map color, but you know, whatever. Uh, needs to be 10 development and need temples. So all of those provinces. So let's get to building those temples up. And it seems that most of them actually already have the temples. It's looking like it's mostly just about the development, which is, you know what, something that we can easily fix. Uh, another thing I was looking at is the culture map mode for our nation. So all of these cultures right here are accepted because we're an empire and they are in our cultural group. Everything in the south here, I would also like to have accepted. So Paru is not an accepted culture. Uh, Kalino is. Uh, Hujan is not. Ban Yak is. And Sertana is. Uh, so we have two cultures down here that are not accepted. But if we look at a mission after this one, we will get plus two max for the cultures. So yes, right now we have less manpower from these provinces in the south, but overall it will be okay. What we may want to consider doing is culture converting these provinces with roaming Haramari. Either that or accepting Haramari as a culture and accept and culture converting away another one. I'm not sure I actually want to do that, but I would like to have all of these provinces completely accepted by us. Same thing with these harpies here. Uh, the harpies can also probably go because I can't accept their culture and I don't really want to, even if I could, because I want to accept these two in the south. So we may look into doing that. For right now, though, I'm not all too worried about it. Uh, yep, there we go. See, our vassal is now 107% uh, annexed, so we will be able to annex them immediately, which is pretty good. Now, before we do this development, I would like to have my merchants be loyal. Uh, this is going to take a while. They're currently at 36 loyalty, so we will see how that goes. But I do want to build a temple here. because I did say that I was going to build it, so let's get started on that. Uh, okay, now with all that out of the way, we're going to go into war with Pruikin. They are allied to Davharl and Ayr Shahar. I don't really care. None of them are a problem. We're going to do a holy war, and we're going to declare the war. Now, Buvari should not be able to jump on this war themselves because I did a little shenanigans, and I used favors to make sure that they had to wait. I asked them to prepare for war, which means the AI cannot declare war within a year, which means we are free to declare this war, jump on all the provinces, and then call Buvari in afterwards. Which is exactly what I am hoping to do. All right now if I call you in... Oh, I can't because uh, I did a religious war. That's okay. It doesn't really matter. We don't really need their help. But, look at that. Hansai is completely annexed. Now, I know that we're struggling for governing capacity, but these are free states. So I might as well state them up. Uh, state that. State that. All right. That's good. We can half state this stuff. Actually, that takes us over our governing capacity. Let's not. Let's not. But that does mean that we need to use all money to build governing capacity buildings, uh, including possibly some state houses, to try and bring our governing capacity cost down. Now, it did increase the amount of troops we have under our control. In fact, I think we gained like 30,000 troops there or something. We also inherited their navy, which is putting us pretty far over our naval force limit. 
Uh, we have a bunch of troops up here as well that are ready to go to war with Lan Jin Hui, who has full annexed Beyond Fang. So, rip Beyond Fang. Uh, Baik Du Gong is our vassal, so things are looking decent for us. Let's get these two together, see what they have. All right, 25,000. It's a little bit dramatic, honestly. I don't know if I really need that kind of a split. I can send these 10 cannons up to this 24,000 stack. Actually, we can use them in this war. Yeah, let's get them under these sieges. And we can just have this stack run around and do with rebels. Also, if you look at this, we have pretty good coverage on our forts now. Some are next to each other, but that's okay. Uh, there are a couple more forts that I can build, though. Or at least we should consider building. Don't think we really want it there. I'd rather have it there. Just so we have full coverage. Because once we have full coverage, then I can use the mage spell to increase my plant growth. Because then I won't get the devastation. That makes it much more worth it, in my opinion. Because the devastation can really, really hurt. Uh, but no devastation, no problems. And we are right at our governing capacity. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. But that is just the cost of playing wide and stating everything up. You know, I could have decided to half-state things. I could have just left them as territories, even though it would be kind of a waste. Uh, but I did not. And so, we will have to simply live with the consequences of my actions. Is what it is. Uh, now, this war is going to be a little tricky because they're all the way over here. I do have access, though, so it shouldn't be too bad. So, like you, I can get you started to move over here. I don't want you to go across that island, though. Sounds like a great way to get trapped, if you ask me. I don't really feel like getting an island trapped today, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, where'd those rebels... Oh, that's... Unfortunate. Okay, let's pick these guys up. I didn't realize that they were going to spawn down there. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. Well, let's get our guys moving. Can I have another general? I have another two generals, in fact. Uh, you can take that general. It doesn't really matter which one, as long as there's someone. We'll bring these troops down, and then we'll land them. Hopefully, their navies just leave us alone. These transports are not part of the war, do not fear. They're just simply doing uh, national business. Well, he's got 60,000 troops down here. Uh, let's see what the rest of Pruikin's army. Maybe that will get them to surrender if we take them out. Hopefully. There we go. Same thing with you. Go wipe them because they have no morale. And you can move back up to Quebec to land. Yep, yep, yep. Ooh, yep. Those rebels need to be dealt with. Uh, let's get these troops back up there so they can do their job. Okay. Uh, Pruikin. Look, man, I just want this, okay? He will accept this? Why? Oh, because it's not a full annexation. He owns land over here. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Now, is Buvari going to break their alliance with me over this? It doesn't look like they're thrilled with what I've done. But it also doesn't look like they're immediately going to break our alliance. So I guess that's a win, I suppose. So it's kind of a barely a win, but it's a win nonetheless. Okay, so you're going to move into position, and that is interesting. So the command has declared war on Lin Shen Hui, and Lin Shen Hui's great conqueror has died so what if I didn't attack Lan Jin Hui what if I instead declared war on the command that would probably be the more politically savvy thing to do Yes, I could jump on Lan Xinhui, and yes, it would be a rather easy war, but what if instead we used the distraction that Lan Xinhui presents to uh, deal with the bigger, better option? And I'm actually going to spend the money. I'd rather have the manpower. 
Actually, that's only like two months worth of manpower. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I didn't realize how much manpower I'm making a month. Uh, odious comparisons. The hobgoblin reputation of disciplined and efficient war camp management is not exaggerated in the slightest. So much is this the case, their competence is caused for sore relations with the rest of the military, from the lowly soldiers who feel sneered and mocked by the hobgoblin's apparent attitude of superiority, to the high command, whose members are acutely aware of the superior hobgoblin methods and how poorly that reflects on their leadership. This contrast has proven so stark in the case of one of our armies, our agents have inst investigated and found proof of a deep-reaching scheme of military equipment, resale, and record forgery that point directly at some of the most powerful noble houses and merchant conglomerates. Uh, we can lose professionalism and gain corruption. We can gain professionalism, gain small tarns increase of hobgoblins at the cost of loyalty. Or hob scapegoat. Lose tolerance of hobgoblins, gain 3,000 crowns, and 3% professionalism. I want the professionalism. So we're going to take that 5%. Thank you very much. That is worth more to me. So sorry. All right, combat width is currently 27. Which means that this is actually fine. Right there. There are a couple more dudes in there. Just in case. And that will be a pretty good frontline stack. And you're a pretty good siege stack. In fact, you have four siege pips on your general. Which is very, very good. Right, let's get the rest of these forts built up. Need one there. And I'll build one here. Why not? Actually, we'll spread it out. Nah, we'll be right here. Final answer. Anywhere else need a fort? It does not look like it. Looks like we're all forted up. I mean, except for these provinces down here. I don't really care about those ones as much, though. Uh, that is a lot of rebels, so let's deal with them. And then once they have dealt with that, then we will move on and we will attack the command with the Holy War. We will call in Buvari and we will hopefully uh, kick him in the teeth. Preferably. Now, Buvari wants all of that, which I can't say I'm a huge fan of, but we might be able to make this work. Because if I can start pulling trade from here, well, actually, it won't matter if I can pull trade from this node. Yeah, it literally won't matter at all. Because it's only pulled into the Kurunyana node and the Beyond Fang trade node, neither of which I have full control over. Though if I do move much harder into this node, perhaps I can use that to pull trade in Yanshin over to me. So I suppose there is an argument to be made for wanting this stuff. On top of that, if I release Beyond Fang as a vassal, uh, Beyond Fang? It's saying that Beyond Fang still exists? No. It doesn't. It's just because their flag is white. It, it, when it's grayed out, you can barely tell. But no, they're definitely gone if their cores will disappear. We could release them as a vassal. I'm not sure I want to, though. Yep, yeah, not sure I want to do that. But we'll see. Yeah, no land we war. Just a command war. So look, they're wasting all of their manpower on fighting Lan Jin Hui. At the very least, well, if we don't stop the command from killing them, that doesn't really matter, as long as we get to move in and take their stuff. Now, that's Buvari's entire army there. I'm hoping that they hire mercs. I suppose there's only one way to find out, though, and that is to declare war, to safeguard our interests, sir. Whatever that Stellaris line is. Uh, governing capacity will be a problem. Rebels will be a problem. You know what's not a problem? Find the command. Actually, it is. It, you know, it'll be a whole thing. But here we go. The command is being attacked now on all sides, except for I guess north, though that's mountains, so it doesn't really count. Uh, but hey, that's what they get for being so mean to everybody. When you're this mean to everybody, they're all gonna team up against you. That's just how it works. Next time, don't be so much of a jerk, and maybe people will not attack you. Yeah, I know. Crazy concept. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, there's the first Buvari stack hired as mercenaries. I fear for these 15,000 troops' lives. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. The command has decided that actually, no, we are no longer at war with Lan Jinhui. We are actually just at war with Poe Mew. <laughs> 
We were like, never mind. We're actually going to immediately just divert all resources to moving south. Well, I mean, it's fine. I can, I can adjust. Yeah, and see, now they're running away. They're scared. They're scared. They don't, they don't even know. They're not even ready. No way they move on to that province. It's an early Christmas. Oh, man. Uh, do I have any policies that I can implement that would help me here? No. Do I have any advisors I can replace? Yes. I don't need land force limit. I would rather just have actual combat capabilities. It's not going to stop me from moving in here, though. Yeah, it's pretty even losses. We can't really afford that long term. I mean, actually, we, we probably can, to be fair. We have more manpower than they do. Over time, they will have more manpower than we do, just because of how the command works. But for now, we're doing fine. We really should claim these border forts. That way, Buvari can actually move in. Though Buvari is moving north, which is honestly great. No complaints from me. If Buvari wants to move north and threaten the command's capital while I move more into the east. I think that'll work out well for us. That's a four siege general right there. And we're going to 92%. Well, I suppose it doesn't matter how many pips you have on your general. You're still going to sit on sieges no matter what you do. Oh, disease outbreak. Huge. All right, we're hoping for discipline here. If we can, please. Please, oh, please, oh, please. Okay. No discipline allowed, apparently. Just like one single bit of help game. One single bit of friendliness from you. Nope. We're not even getting morale armies, guy. They're like, no, you get no combat buffs. Whoa. Hobgoblin Siege Ability and Hobgoblin Spy Network. Well, I suppose that means I need to throw a... Uh, Bit of a counter espionage if they have that much siege, or that much spy network on me. I didn't actually mean to take this fight. I think we just retreat here. It's a minus two penalty. Sure, I could stay and fight. Yes, I would probably win. No, it's not worth the losses. No, they actually did take double my losses, so maybe it would have been. I don't know. But it's okay. Remember, it is a show superiority war. So, it is war score based on battles. There have been two battles. And apparently that puts it at an even zero. So the battles have essentially counted for nothing. Uh, which, you know, is fine, I guess. But yeah, this is this is perfect. This is exactly what Bavari needs to do. <laughs> How does it feel, Command? How does it feel, finally? Finally, the war machine, the mercenary creating machine of Bavari works for me and not for themselves. Look at this, war allies. Yes, yes, 164,000 mercenaries. I feel vindicated, okay? The command can be upset about it all they want, but I have had to fight this Bavari so many times. And so now I get to just enjoy the benefits of having allied Bavari early on. And it's very nice. Very, very nice. Alright, siege this. How's the command doing in their other war? It says they're winning. I'm not sure that's true, though. I don't know if I believe them when they say they're winning. Is it kind of looks like to me that they're being pushed back. I don't want to spread falsehoods, but... They've definitely pulled back. Now, part of that's going to be because I declared war on them. And so they're coming back to fight the defensive war, which is more important. Okay. Wow. That's a lot of dudes. All right, retreat. Retreat, 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 retreat. Yeah, valiant effort of defending that, but boy, oh boy, is that not worth it. Go ahead and scorch that. That is unfortunately losing us a lot of war score though, when I do that. But I didn't realize they would have half their army right there. Oh, sorry. Their whole army right here. I suppose I should have figured. 
It's a 3,000 crowns. This button is so powerful. I know that I should check and see what the other rituals do, but just being able to click and get a couple thousand ducats for absolutely nothing, how am I supposed to pass that up? <laughs> you just heard me say that aloud. A couple thousand ducats for absolutely nothing. That is so good. I would be foolish not to click that button. Oh yeah, it's barracks time, baby. It is barracks time. Give me that manpower. Every province, more manpower, more dudes, more stuff, more things. I do need to come and defend this, though. Or at least, yeah, see, if they come to this... Okay, I'm going to force march you guys down. Force, force march. I'm going to force march at tech 13. Yeah, that's how the game works, Poe Mew. You can definitely force march at tech 13. Mm-hmm. Not unlocked by admin tech 15 or anything. Nope. Uh, that's just fake news. Not how the game works. According to my great knowledge of the game, apparently. Now, see, the problem is I've left these guys to get attacked. Because that's what's going to happen. So I need to move them back up. Because if I'm not up here, these 67,000 are going to come attack and they're going to win. I'm not going to be able to beat them. So... Just keep moving. Then Shinhui has gotten some occupations up here in the north. That's fine. I don't really care. I could do the funny. I could be a real funny guy. I could be a real funny guy right now. And just completely block off the command from taking anything. <laughs> oh, that would be funny. And just kind of lock the command in. I can't take this. But I can take this. Now, is that something that I actually want to do? No. I don't think so. At least not all the way up to there. But again, getting control of the Beyond Fang node would be nice. And I'm taking the one province that I need for my missions. Uh, taking this would be nice, too, because it would allow me to, uh, get more control over this node. I can just peace out for this right now. That's 108% overextension, 469 admin points. Nice. Or I could be greedy. You know what they say. Greed is good. It's good for the soul. Builds character. Oh, I, man. I messed it up. I could do something like that. That's not bad. Take war reps. Right? That seems pretty good. I guess I could push for, like, Zhao Do or whatever, but I don't know. That seems like it's pretty good. I can add these two companies to trade companies, which will give me a merchant here. And I'm already pulling from here, so I can just pull more trade that way. Yeah, I think that's what I do. I think it's the plan. Which means we want to fight battles. Are you, Okay, you're sieging. You're not disloyal. I thought for a second that the Jade March was disloyal, and I was like, how? It's very difficult for the Jade March to become disloyal just because of the subject type that they are they are a uh, slave state so they really uh i'm not gonna say like to be loyal because that's definitely not uh, what is implied but they are loyal quite often they have a uh, loyalty like less than desire from development i think it is I can't remember off the top of my head uh nope i just want to go fight here just want to fight that's it. Oh, it's a good thing I moved. Command is just bleeding manpower, though, chasing this stack around. Okay, and it's up to 66%. We're getting close to being able to... Peace out here. You're going to go there, and you're going to go there. You guys just keep moving up. I mean, one thing that could mess up the peace deal is if Lan Xinhui gets an occupation on any of these provinces. 
So perhaps I should be a little bit more invested in making sure that doesn't happen. Uh, I could see this down too, but I'm not going to. I'm going to be a little bit more cautious than that. Wait, right, now again. All right, beautiful. We're so far ahead on tech. We're so unbelievably far ahead on tech. Uh, which means we can probably develop all of these provinces that we need for the mission after this war. Won't really be a big deal. Okay, minus eight reasons. How you doing, command? They're down to 100,000 troops. They're basically full occupied. Yeah, this was absolutely the right call. Then I can just turn around and uh, defeat Lan Jin Hui when they don't have any manpower left. L. L-A-I moment. They simply were not prepared for what I was ready to do. There we go. Another province taken care of. That's 77% war score. I don't want to take this because I don't want to give it to Buvari. I mean, I guess I could give it to Buvari, but... Just for better borders, but, you know. No thanks. Could just keep pushing in here for more and more and more. There's so much admin. That is so many admin points. I could just not take this province, though. I'm going to take Hubao. It's not all of this node, but it's... I mean, I could just leave out this stuff for now. And just take this node by storm. Meh. I'd rather have this. I see no reason not to keep pushing in this war. Like, there is no incentive for me to peace out right now. We're doing perfectly fine. We're not under threat. We have, like, max manpower. What could go wrong? He says, <laughs> looking at the camera, waiting for the other shoe to drop and for everything to fall apart. Uh, Wuluwi, bringer of famine. The province of Taldeo has been plunged into a state of famine and distress as their once thriving crops have inexplicably, inexplicably withered. Their tools have failed and their materials have broken apart. The once fertile soil is transformed into a desolate expanse of sand and ash devoid of nutrients necessary for sustenance. Uh, well, we do get minus 10% local dev cost. Minus one local goods produced and minus one local prosperity growth. But it's cheaper to develop. Huge. <laughs> Massive. Truly. Economic uh, growth or something. All right, let's go fight. Then we can continue to siege this down. Again, like the command's basically full occupied. Not bad. We are about to max out on some points, apparently. Looks like admin. Yeah, don't worry. I'm going to fix that problem. <laughs> Don't you worry, game. I'm about to not be maxed out on admin points. No problem. I'm about to lose like half of what I have. Didn't I send a stack over here? No, I guess I sent them north. That was dumb. Why'd I do that? I don't know. We still don't have ticking war score? Nope. We only have plus six war score from battles. Okay. That would make sense why we're not able to peace out yet. I'm going to take this fight. Even though he might reinforce it, I'm still going to risk it. Nope. He does not reinforce it in time. That's 3.72 war score. And that is 100% peace deal from the command. 1563. And we're now 155% overextended. And we are also over our governing capacity. At least we will be. Meh. All right. Uh, let's get our troops into position to get ready for the Lanshin Hui War. Obviously, it's not going to be for a while. We're probably going to have to deal with some large, large, large rebels. Uh, rebel stacks. But all in all, that's perfectly fine. It doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to get my merchants to be loyal by the time I develop this stuff. Which is somewhat upsetting. But I would like to seize land here. Like, now. So... Perhaps we need to just do some development. But we're actually at 30 minutes here, so we may just do that in the next one. 
Yeah, I think so. Um, not exactly the war I thought we were going to fight, but definitely a good war to fight. Uh, we will add this stuff into a trade company after we convert it, just because it makes it look better on the map. Uh, and Lan Xin Hui will be our next target. I keep saying that. I keep saying, oh yeah, Lan Xin Hui, next episode, next episode. But I just get better opportunities. Look, we got the command down to 63,000 troops. Why would I not do that? And I mean, we've already spent all their money on mercs. It's a win-win. Uh, but that's going to be it for today. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.